right, welcome back to the program, folks, here on the TRA Schools TV Game of the Week presented by the TRAA. I'm Casey skinner Gasty, alongside Jack Bratt. And, uh, Jack, we had a pretty interesting first half uh, between these two teams, a 13-8 lead for Thomas and Reese. They're going to kick it off to South. Uh, what South do you think they're going to do coming out of halftime? I think they're going to try to uh, score right off the bat again, just like they did right before halftime, and try to get uh, the lead. Maybe go for another two point conversion and just go for the extra point. We'll you know, see what we got because Tom's over south. Again, they didn't look really good for a lot of that first half, but that last drive, they put it all together and got themselves right back in the game. Oh, it looks like an ominous full moon night coming out across there. You can really feel this crowd here for Tom's River East. Bleachers are shaking. Flag out there. So one thing Costa, he's had a couple of special teams with six, usually pretty reliable. But he had the missed extra point. Now two kickoffs going out there. So tough, uh, tough break for him there. Both kickers really though too, both had, had some issues. You surprised by the strength of Tom's Reese uh, defense in that first half? I mean, they really clogged up a lot of those lanes. Yeah, like we were saying earlier, they uh, any team basically once they play as a team and not uh, just for stats for each player, they uh, they can really do anything. Um, but for Tom's East, uh, I was a little shocked at how they did shut down the run because in the past couple years, we know that they. Uh, they haven't been that great of a team, but it looks like they're doing well so far, and uh, they hope to continue that uh, those goals as of right now. Yeah, first play, try to pitch it off to Squire, and he got a short game. That was 52. Anthony Contagianis with the tackle. So it looks like South are really trying to work the edge and trying to work the outside. Trying to maybe set something up in the middle. And a second down and eight. Handoff coming around the left side. A counter play with Squire again. He somehow got a couple extra yards there. Really fought for that extra last two or three. And makes it a more manageable third down. Carry on the play to the five. to Squire. Looks like Kato Giannis there, number 52. Got up a little slow there, helmet off. Looks like he's okay, he's staying in there. The third down and two. Here for Thompson for South. Huber under center. That time a keeper by Huber, and he easily gets the first down. Getting tackled there by Yusuf Ahmed, number four, number 26, Tommy uh, Grande. Yeah, the South offense here is definitely finding ways to keep the uh, drive alive, and converting on that third and two is a huge play for them there. Yeah, they do that, they do pretty well. Well, they found something that last drive starting to carry over here. I have to see if the East defense can respond to it. Put up a little stand. The first and 10, 49 yard line. Back to throw Huber, looking left. There's that quick out right at the sticks. Did he stay in bounds? Uh, they're going to give it to him. There was a catch. Nice catch by number two, Tyler Matteo. Now they're going to overrule it. So one, one official comes in, overrules the other one, to say he was out of bounds. Very close. That's one of those plays they've been going to, that quick out route. Bring up a second and 10. We'll try it again. They're looking at that two back. Uh, formation there with Rose and Squire. They're going to give a pitch. Out Squire running across the 40. Barrels his way through down inside the 35-yard line. Uh, so nice hard upfield running there by the junior. 
Yeah, it looks as if they've been trying to give uh, Travis Squire the ball a lot tonight, and it looks like it's finally worked out in this job especially. Got it going on. And now, you know, if you're Easter, you got to be a little worried about the fact that all the momentum now shifted towards south. The opportunity to come out of halftime, get the two for one, and take the lead on the Rose. We get another counter play. This time, East almost had him there. Looks like Ahmed was about a second away from getting him in the backfield. South fortunate to get the short game, maybe two or three. There's Justin Tucker. That's a name. Senior number 90, a senior. Christian Pines, he played last year a little bit, came on in the middle of the season. And a pitch to the right side. This time Squire not going to get there. Kanto Giannis, the first one on him. And a whole bunch of players come in and finish him off. So really nice play there. As Kanto Giannis with the tackle. Loss of a few yards on that one. More than five. Squire came up a little limp, a little bit uh, uh, injured there for a second. Looked like he may have came down wrong. Yeah, he definitely got swarmed on that play. Uh, he was definitely not expecting that. And uh, looks like his, he's okay as of right now, but he definitely was a little slow to get up on that play. Now, big down here for Toms over South. Third down and 14. Have to get up to the 25-yard line to move the chains. Huber going to his left, pitches it out. This time it's going to be Rose. Rose breaks two tackles, breaks another one. Gets thrown down at the original line of scrimmage, the 35-yard line. And now it's all up to Coach Signorino what he wants to do. Fourth down and long. What do you think? Uh, it's fourth and long. Uh, I don't think the uh, kicker can make that uh, far of a field goal, so it looks as if they're going to go for it here. Either that or they're going to try to draw the uh, defense offside and try to get a penalty going for South. They had one earlier in the game. Extended that first drive for South. Couldn't do anything with it. Let's see what they do here. Fourth down and 10. Inside of eight minutes, Huber under center. Looks to his right, rolls back left, rolls into pressure. Now on the run, throws it up downfield. That one's going to fall into the arms of an East defender. As that one was intercepted, a call number seven for times over East. That'll be Mike Goodall. So the quarterback thrown to the other quarterback. Only problem is they don't play on the same team. So it's never a good thing. No, it's definitely not a good thing for South. I understand that they were in a uh, bad field position there, but uh, definitely can't, can't throw those away right there. So East dodging on there as a promising drive by South turns up no points. And now Mike Goodall go right back on the field. Another one of these situations. You notice that a lot of high school football players playing both ways, you know, playing multiple positions. What do you think about early in the season? you think that's going to tire these guys out a little bit? Uh, I think that they can uh, withstand uh, all of the uh, all the plays that have been going on since they've been training since uh, I think about end of May, beginning of or not end of May, uh, end of June, beginning of July, and uh, hopefully they can uh, sustain that uh, endurance throughout the rest of the game here. Inside handoff for High School East. Side handoff there to Perry on the play, number 23, Gino Gallo. Number 23, Gino Gallo. Gain of about three, brings up second round. So Gallo, there is that name that we've heard a lot around the East family. A couple older brothers, Louis Gallo. Another one just came in this year, a freshman, Chris Gallo, on the freshman team. Be a second down and eight. Davis goes in motion. Time keeper by Goodall. He drags a couple South defenders with him. Close to the first down. Carry on the play number seven, Mike Goodall. Left by the secondary of the Indians. Be about a yard short. We have a third down and short. 
Tobin. Yeah, they've been going to that play a lot uh, with Mike Goodall on the QB sneak. And uh, I mean, it's been working for East, so why not keep giving it back to uh, Mike Goodall like that? Looks like these guys are going to measure. Very, very close. We got a big 50 50 uh, tonight. We're talking at halftime with our producer Chip Phillips. We were wondering, and a lot, a lot of people from the high school, a lot of people from uh, the other high school, a lot of people from the intermediate school here, and their parents. So a nice, uh, nice 50 50 bot this week. Next to our home stands. Looks like they're going to be a little Coach short. So it'll be third down. We have a pink third down, ticket. about a yard. Pink ticket number 803 676. 803 676. Count it. 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 I don't know, that one a fumble there on a snap. That, he never really got to Goodall. He fourth down. Actually pretty fortunate they didn't lose any yardage on that one, so he fourth down and short. This is a little danger zone as you're inside your own 20-yard line. It's roughly the same distance, though. What do you think? Are they really going to go for this? I mean, if they go... It looks like they're going for it right now. They might try to just lure the defense into an uh, offsides penalty, but and they're going for it. And he didn't need much. He only needed about a yard. Official looking over. I don't know how close that's going to be. They're going to measure this. That's a huge measurement right here. Obviously, if East makes it, they go on with the drive, but if they miss it, they're giving Toms over South excellent field position. Oh boy, by about a nose of a football. Real tight, real close. Yeah, there's definitely a uh, moment of silence right there for the entire East sideline right there, hoping and praying that they could get the first down, and they uh, they did. Uh, that was a huge conversion for them, because if not, South had the ball at about the 15-yard line, and they could have scored very easily. Boy, that moment of anticipation there for the crowd. Boy, so uh, East, they, they prolonged the drive here. Taking a lot of time off as we're coming up on five minutes remaining here in the third quarter. No scoring here in the second half. Still at that halftime lead of five, 13 to eight for the home team. Davis going in motion, a little jet sweep fake. Good all around the left side. Gets close to the 25 yard line. And so Jack, I guess you're starting to see that across at least the high school and the college ranks that the last decade or so, the biggest change is that everybody wants a mobile quarterback like Goodall. Yeah, East has been using him a lot uh, throughout this game and maybe the rest of the season here, but I mean, Tom South's defense is uh, very forgiving with uh, the way Mike Goodall is running the ball right now. I got it going here and we haven't seen a lot of Frank Giannetti lately. You see it right there. Bulldozer coming across for 30-yard line. First down easily up to the 34. You were just waiting for that to kind of happen. It was almost like they were setting it up. Should say here when we got a moment, uh, there was a halftime score when we were at halftime from down south with uh, Southern Regional and number five, Times of our North. Times of our North, the Mariners up 17 to six on the road. Uh, so if that holds, they'll go to two and zero, and it'll set up a, a pretty interesting matchup next week against Manalapa. Good all keeper around the edge, and that time Times of our South, they got him. That one, number one on that one, that was Devin Porsche. 
Yeah, you can see right there that Tom Joe South was definitely expecting the uh, for Goodall to run it, and they probably should have given it to uh, Gene Eddy on that play. Yeah, South, they've been almost like a step just behind the whole game on the defensive line. They're really, really close to maybe knocking one out with a fumble. And, of course, in a game like this, one possession, one turnover could mean the difference in a game. Bring him a second down and 11. Time a sweep to the short side to Smith. He really has nowhere to go. Just tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. I and mean, that's one of those calls where when you're running at the short side of the field, there's just no room. Yeah, maybe they show him with good off the middle there on that one, but uh, you really, it wasn't really a win-win either way. It was kind of a lose-lose situation, especially on the shorter side of the field. There was really no room for him to run, and you could see what happened right on that play right there. Now a third down, and they'll call it nine. Just two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. As we get very close to the end of this third quarter. We've got a third down and nine. Times over south. Trying to hold on defense. Got a run with Gianetti up the middle. And that time, Times over south. Really nice job of containing him, wrapping him up for a minimal game, and they'll force a punt get the ball back to the offense yeah uh, East definitely or East couldn't convert on that play right there and now they have to punt it away to uh, Tom's River South uh, South is hoping to uh, convert on uh, many third downs if they have any and hopefully to score uh, and go up uh, maybe 16 to 8 if they go for the two again Got Matteo and Morrow back deep. They're gonna let it drop. Drops at the 35 yard line. Boy, that was close. Very close there, number 20, Devin Ravis. Almost, and again, we've seen a lot of those up backs doing the same thing. Gotta be really careful there. Ball down at about the 34 yard line. That's where Times River South will start. Uh, one drive so far for them in the second half. Started off pretty well, then ended with those penalties. Yeah, this third quarter seems to have flown right by uh, both teams here. And uh, South is uh, trying to obviously score again. Hopefully they can punch it in the end zone. And that would really turn around the uh, momentum here at uh, Times River High School East. Hey, East, you got to wonder if some of those guys in the secondary, like Smith, you got Pines, you got uh, number 15, Totten, they could come up, maybe make a, a play and you know, punch a ball out, could change the whole dynamics of the game. Looks like they're gonna change up running backs here too in the backfield. A little bit of a bigger set there with Porsche, number one, lined up as the H-back. Keep, keeper by Huber, and he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Really nothing going there on that one. They're going to give the credit to Gianetti on that tackle. Really a lot of guys going up there. Grande, Gianetti. You got Gallo who's always coming in from that corner slot. Made a couple really nice tackles. Let's see what they do on this one. Inside give up the middle across the 35 yard line down to the 38. Got a gain of four and it'll bring up a third down and six which will be on the other side of this break. I don't think they're going to snap it here with about 15 seconds remaining. We're going to let it go, and we'll go to the final quarter here from Vincent J. Dvorak Field. Times are reached. Two touchdowns early. South answered before halftime. That's where we still sit at a 13-8 margin as we go to the final quarter of the game so Jack I mean first game in the booth here but you know what are your impressions of the South team overall you know offensive defensive side of the ball what, what have you seen from what you liked what have you, you kind of not liked uh, I feel they were a little uh, rusty in the first half kind of getting the mistakes out of the way first but as we saw uh, with about three minutes left in the second quarter they drove down the field it seemed very easily and they uh, ended up scoring and got a two point to go in the half. So 
Um, they looked well uh, going into half, and uh, it's just been a very defensive game up to this point right now. Yeah, we should mention again while we got a moment uh, here as we start the fourth quarter, you're looking at a, a totally redone high school East Field. Again, all three high schools, a part of the referendum that was passed by the voters last year, uh, last school year, they were able to build some of these new uh, fields, put it in, replace it. First time it's been replaced since the original turf went in over a decade ago. Uh, looks really, really nice here. Yeah, they, uh, we did it over the summer, and uh, when I first saw the field, it looked really beautiful. They, uh, they did a really nice job on the uh, turf, especially in the middle there, because it, in the middle there, there used to be a, uh, a patch over the 50-yard line, and it didn't look too well. Looks really well. No slipping on that one as Toms over south converts the third down. A nice little bootleg rollout for Huber. Quick, easy pass out there to Jeremy Rose. They move the sticks and get on uh, across midfield into Raiders territory. And so now we're looking really at strength on strength now. Coach Signorino, an offensive-minded coach. Coach Sandberg, a defensive-minded coach. are going right at each other here. First and 10, Huber under center. Gonna hand off right to Porsche. A couple missed tackles there as he almost hurdled somebody on the far side there. Got nine on first down. And so Porsche, bringing in a bigger back, you know, what, what's the method on that one in terms of when you got a guy like Squires quick, now they're gonna bring in somebody who's a little bulkier, who's, who's maybe give a little punch, is that what they're looking for? Uh, yeah, it might, uh, it might be because of that um, maybe close injury there by Travis Squire earlier, or they might just be trying to uh, rotate in different backs to see what they can uh, can do here as the South brings it up to East 30 yard line. Yeah, you're right, Porsche there. I mean, something different. It's something for the, different for the defense, I guess, to look at and try to adjust to as well. As he's going to run on a, a new player there, Frank Lord. Runs at the linebacker spot as they're going to hand it off to Porsche around the right side. That time, East, though, strung it out, and Ahmed came in and got him in a backfield for a short loss. Yeah, that was a great tackle there by uh, the East uh, defense right there. Definitely saved them a few yards, and they're hopeful to get another one like that very soon. So it'll be a second down and 12. They'll say he lost two on that one. Huber going to go under center yet again. Portion motion. Give inside. And that time he'll get just beyond the 30-yard line. They're going to bring back in Rose here, number 25. And now Tom's over <laughs> Now Tom's over South is going to take a timeout. Thank you on that one. Tom's over South taking a timeout. A third down and long here with just over 10 minutes remaining here in the final quarter. So you got a five point lead if your Tom's over East. Your Tom's over South, you're down by five. You got a third and long. Not so sure about your field goal situation, whether or not that's going to work out. What kind of play do you think Coach Signorino is going to draw up here? Uh, third and long. Uh, it looks as if they're probably either going to try to do those quick out routes that they've been doing before the half and right after the half, or maybe they're going to try to do uh, some type of uh, maybe uh, a screen pass. But it looks like they're probably going to go with the uh, quick out routes to get out of bounds and maybe move the ball downfield a little bit. Well, with the way the game is going, they're going to probably have two downs to get the first down here. Third and long. Roll out to the left this time by Huber. Pops it out. That time he couldn't connect with his wide receiver, Jeremy Rose. And it'll bring up a fourth down. So same play that they had earlier in the drive. This time he just couldn't hit him. Yeah, 
just the quarter, uh, the QB and the uh, running back right there just couldn't connect on the route, and it looks like looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Uh, they're going to try and obviously pick up the first. Um, not really sure what, the, what they're going to try and do here, but you'll see fourth down and long. Times over South Huber back to throw. He's got pressure in his face. Throws to the right. Nowhere close. And it'll be a turnover on downs as Huber goes to the ground. Really nothing there. Times over East, a lot of pressure coming up in his face. Yeah, there's really nothing uh, the, uh, Huber could do right there. His pressure came in as soon as he snapped the ball. So that was a smart play, and he had to throw it away immediately. So now Times over East will take over. They've got 10 minutes. You got a feeling they're going to be grounding and pounding the ball, trying to move the ball down the field, get better field position, and also take some time off the clock. Because now the clock, the, obviously the friend of Times of East, the enemy of Times of South. Yeah, if Times of East here could maybe uh, take like about five minutes or so off the clock, drive downfield, uh, maybe even kick a field goal or score, that would definitely help them out. And they'd go up, if they kick a field goal, they'd go up 16 to eight, and they'd waste about half the time left in the game. First and 10 times a reset at a 29 yard line. The keeper by Goodall and everybody coming at him. They brought the house on that one and Goodall fortunate to only lose about three. Yeah, East was, has been running that play a lot. It looks like South is starting to finally catch on to it and they're starting to shut it down. So it looks like East is gonna have to come up with a few uh, new and different plays here if they wanna drive the ball down the field. Is that danger zone for Times River East where you know Times River South are going to be nipping and clawing at the ball to try to spark a big play and change the momentum for them. You got to be very careful. You got to have two hands on the football. You know, protect the rock as they used to say. We got a second down and long. Good on a shotgun formation. Pressure coming, eludes the first guy. Rolling out to his right, trying to get it to somebody. Gets it out to Engelhard across the 30 yard line. And so right there, good all the elusiveness like we saw in the first half, comes back here, makes something out of nothing. Yeah, he was close to getting uh, sacked right there, but he uh, he's very elusive and he got out of the pocket and was able to throw to Riley Engelhard. And Engelhard is uh, a big body and was able to catch the ball and turn around and almost go upfield right there. Brings up a third down and seven. As Smith will come in with the play, they have to get up to the 39 yard line to move the sticks. Good all Smith in motion. They're going to give it to Smith on the jet sweep. Around the outside, does get to the outside, gets the first down. So patience paying off there for Smith, Alex Smith, and he gets the first down. Nice run. Yeah, Smith is such a quick and elusive back that he could you could pretty much give it to him anywhere and he'll get the first or run for more and he definitely did his job right there. And so the chains move. Clock keeps ticking. Raider Nation still in the game in front of us. We've got a couple of uh, seconds in between each play now because time's race, no rush. See what they do here, maybe uh, trying to get it up the middle again. Keeper by Goodall. And it looked like they were gonna have a bottled up behind the backfield, in the backfield, but uh, he manages to get one or two. Goodall, though, is so elusive, and he was able to get out of that one really quick. Uh, able to gain about three to, f three to four yards right there, and uh, able to keep the drive alive with uh, second down coming up. It was about uh, eight minutes left. They're basically just trying to run down the clock right here and possibly score if, if it comes to that as well. Second down and eight, this play going to the right side. Goodall keeping it, cutting back upfield across the 45 yard line. They'll mark him down at the 47, where his forward progress was stopped. 
bring up another third down. This one will be a third down and four. You know, we've seen South be a little bit more conservative in terms of trying to fill up the gaps. Other times they, they were rushing with a lot of blitzing. Do you think they're going to blitz on this one or be a little more conservative? Uh, looks like it is. it's a uh, third down right here, correct? So um, South is probably going to try to either blitz or they're going to see, they're probably going to see the formation for, uh, first and then depending on that, they're going to try and blitz. Third down and four, we're going to get a timeout. Timeout, Times Over East. That's their first of the second half. So now both teams with two timeouts just inside of seven minutes remaining in this one. So it looks like uh, this game certainly living up to the hype here. It was going to be a pivotal game. All the previews in the summertime are saying that this was a critical game for both teams. They both had a win if they wanted to have a winning season. And they both have found a way to come to play. They look shaky at times, uh, but they're right in it both in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and no, I'm pretty sure this was voted game of the week. Um, so it's definitely living up to the hype as uh, both sides are... Uh, it's a very defensive game, and uh, it's, it's definitely is living up to the hype. Got a defense, Tom's over South praying that their defense stands up tall here and gets the ball back to their offense. They're going to have to stop Goodall. So he hands off to Giannetti. Giannetti was stopped, and he's pushed forward. I mean, the point of contact, they had him right at the line of scrimmage. He managed to get three right to the 50. And now decision time for Coach Sandberg, fourth down and one at midfield. Yeah, with the way Coach Sandbrook has been uh, coaching this team so far, it looks as if he's going to probably try and go for it here. If if they don't get it, South is at the 50. If they do get it, uh, they keep the drive alive. Uh, the clock continues to run, and they continue to march down the field. We'll have to wait and see what happens. So East... Aggressive play call, fourth down and one at the 50-yard line. And now Coach Zipper going to think about it a little bit. Obviously didn't like something that he saw. So he'll take the timeout. They'll regroup. So probably the biggest play of the game going on right now, fourth down and one. Times over south. They need to stop him here or else they're going to start to run out of time with just six minutes remaining. Yeah, it's probably the biggest play of the game right here. If they get it, like I said, they keep the ball moving, drive is live, clock keeps running. If not, South has the, pretty much the rest of the game that they could use to uh, win the game and score with the touchdown here. An update on that Toms over North Southern game. Uh, Southern came out, they ended up getting a touchdown. They missed a two point conversion. Five point game, 17. The 12, kind of eerily similar of a five-point game going on here between these two towns over schools. Uh, and then Southern and, and North, from reading the Twitter feed, they've been going back and forth with a couple interceptions. So uh, that one definitely tightening up down the parkway. Be a fourth down and one here for Towns over East. Good all with Giannetti right in back of him in the backfield. Going right to him, and he gets the first down. Needed one, got three. Yeah, it was definitely a smart uh, play call right there by Coach Sandberg. And uh, when Frankie Giannetti's coming at you, you really can't stop that on fourth and one. He gets it. The clock continues to roll inside of six minutes. And now times are south. They have to start thinking about being a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more uh, violent there on defense trying to slap the ball out. Inside, Yusef Ahmed, he hasn't had a lot of carries tonight. That's a good one, though, on first down as he get, picks up about five. Clock keeps rolling. You, know, you, you said you played football. Is there anything that Toms over South can do a little bit different to maybe catch Toms over East off guard? 
Um, I mean, they keep using, or not keep using, but they have used those out routes in the past, and maybe they should go back to those uh, if they get the ball back. Or on defense, maybe they should um, be aware for um, good old quick and elusive plays by running the QB sneak right up the middle, or be aware of uh, Gene Eddy's presence in the backfield. They got Yusef Ahmed going to get that one again. He carries about two or three defenders ahead. That's going to be really close to picking up another Raiders first down. Depends on a spot. Might be just a little bit short. They're going to measure it. Tell you what, sometimes that gets a little bit crazy with these officials, but you know, there's no luxury of instant replay to measure the spot here in high school football. So it's probably a good thing that they're taking their time to make sure they get it right. Yeah, we'll see here if it's a uh, first down or not. It's a close call and uh, looks as if they are just short of the first down. About one uh, one yard out and a couple inches away. I'll tell you what, Jack. Every time we keep looking at that through the binoculars, it keeps getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, the officials, they had to double check that one. They're even going to measure with a chain link to make sure they get it exact on the measurement. It was pretty darn close. I think a dose of Giannetti up the middle, or you think he, he keeps it? I think the defense thinks that they're going to go with Giannetti, but maybe uh, Goodall keeps it here and maybe uh, either tries to run to the long side, uh, the left side, or um, he just keeps it up the middle and keeps doing what he's been doing all game. Third down and only a handful of inches. Inside, handoff, Yusef Ahmed. He didn't need much to get it. Wasn't a lot of room, but he does get enough for Raiders first down. It's definitely a scary backfield with uh, Frank Giannetti on one side and Yusuf Ahmed on the other. The South defense isn't really too sure who uh, Goodall is gonna hand it off to. Now we got inside of four minutes, clock running. He's taking some time. You can tell Goodall taking a look at the back judge. Giannetti goes around the left side. He barrels his way in to the line, picks up three. Clock continuing to roll. And now Tom's are south noticing that. I have to take a timeout. They'll take their Second one, they have one more left. So with South, it's going to be really hard to come back in this one unless they do something extraordinary. Interception probably unlikely because I, I got news for you. I don't think Tom Zarese is going to throw the ball the rest of the game. They're going to probably keep it on the ground, right? Yeah, that would be very smart if they just kept it on the ground, which is what most people think they're going to do, and they probably are going to do. Uh, it wouldn't be the best play call if they went for a pass here on uh, there's about what, three minutes left in the game and chance for two uh, times of our teams to go two and zero oh as they go on the next week. Yeah, second down and seven for times of East. Right at the 35 yard line of the Indians. Hand off right side this time, Giannetti. He'll pick up five and it'll be a third down and very short. Maybe about two yards or so. So we'll get the final timeout coming from Tom's River South. So now they're out of timeouts, can't stop the clock the rest of the way uh, with 316 remaining. Yeah, if Tom's River South is already out of timeouts, that's, uh, that's not a good sign in case they do get the ball back. They'll have to do more of those outer corner routes right there.
So Tom Zaris, they're trying to do something on this field that they have not done since 2011. They have not beaten Tom Zaris South at Tom Zaris East since September 9th of 2011. So it's been eight years since they've done this on this turf. Wow, that's a, uh, that's a long time since uh, East has not beaten South on this turf here. And if they indeed do, then uh, it will definitely be uh, an insane, uh, I guess, game. Um, and the fans and everyone here at East and all the supporters will definitely be uh, extremely excited for East to win if they do indeed get it here. First down there, Times of East, Giannetti, three straight carries. And that one might be the icing on top of the cake. That clock will momentarily stop and then start rolling. So you figure probably about 40 seconds or so, maybe 45 seconds for every play. So very, very little Times Over South can do right here. Yeah, especially if they've already used all of their timeouts. Um, there is very little they could do right here. And it doesn't look like East is going to throw it anytime soon. So if they could pick up a few more firsts down and maybe even run it into the end zone. It looks like the game is uh, just about over here. Giannetti, fourth carry in a row. He gets up close to the 20-yard line, gain of four on first down, 225 and rolling. Good on, another handoff to Giannetti. And South, you know, they've tried to stop him all night. They just haven't been able to get the proper leverage to bring him down. Yeah, they haven't been able to bring him down pretty much all night. And uh, Frankie Giannetti just continues to uh, pound this, uh, I guess you could say pound the rock in a way, uh, as he gets close to uh, picking up another first down if he has not already. Bring up a third down and short. Third down, maybe one. With a buck 20 remaining. First down seals it. Giannetti in the backfield with Goodall. Goes right to him. Gets the first down. And now all East has to do is avoid making the mistake the Giants made way back in the 1970s. Joe Bizarchik, a miracle at the Meadowlands, part one. That's all they gotta do. Yeah, it looks as if uh, this game is about over. As you said, there's only about a minute 30 or a minute 20 left in the game. And if they continue to run as they should, uh, the game will be over sooner rather than later. East gonna go into the victory formation. Maybe one more snap and that's about it. Goodall takes the knee. About 30 seconds. They won't have to snap the ball again. And so ladies and gentlemen, for the first time since 2011, Toms over East defeats Toms over South at Vincent J. Dvorak Field. They christen the new field perfectly with a W to improve to 2-0 on the season. And Toms over South 0-1 to start their 2019 campaign. Heck of a job by Coach Sandberg's bunch. Yeah, heck of a job by Coach Sandberg is right. Uh, he made all the right play calls tonight, and the team is lining up to shake hands with the uh, with the Toms River South here as they go on to become 2-0. Nice and loud, the band, the cheerleaders, Raider Nation all in queue. The festivities beginning, the post-game festivities, that is, is, you know, Tom's of Reese, there's a little bit of excitement now and a little bit of energy with this program that's been lacking for most of the last decade. Uh, but Coach Sandberg, fourth season, maybe he's found something, you know, that's sparking the bottle with this group. 
Yeah, he definitely has, and maybe he's gotten even a little gutsier with his play calls here, as we've seen throughout this game here. And you know, on the other side, Coach Signorino's Indians, they didn't necessarily play too poorly. They had a couple mistakes. Remember you mentioned about they came out a little cold, uh, but they definitely did not do anything to ashamed themselves. They definitely played a really nice game. Yeah, both teams did play a really good game. It was just the time management of both teams was, uh, or not the time management, the defense of both teams was uh, fantastic as uh, South held East to 13, which was a little too much if they wanted to get a win here, and East held South to only eight points tonight. Yeah, the scoring in this one, East came out, scored the first 13 points, two Giannetti touchdowns, then there was a four-yard run by number 25, Jeremy Rose, a two-point conversion before halftime, all the scoring in the first half uh, for these two teams. Held scoreless, like you were saying, the defenses took over in the second half. And Tom's are cementing uh, that defensively they're going to be one of the best at the shore. Uh, next week, uh, these two teams are going to play again. Uh, they will play different teams, of course, though. Tom's and Reese going to head over to Jackson to play Jackson Liberty on the road. And Tom's are South going to head over back to Detweiler Stadium to play Manchester uh, and try to get their first win of the season. Well, Jack, any final thoughts, or uh, we're good to go? Uh, just want to say that East played a really good game. Uh, both teams did really well tonight, but East was just a little stronger, and uh, they ended up winning for the first time on this home field since uh, 2011. And so that's great. Uh, Jack, you want to come back next week? Got a good game. we got Manalapa and North here on uh, TR Schools TV, right? Yeah. Did a great job there, first game. Want to thank the superintendent again, Dave Healy, uh, and the Board of Education. Want to thank uh, them for doing a great job of the coin toss, and you know, thank them for putting in the fields here with the approval of the voters again from that referendum. Uh, more improvements coming here throughout the district. Uh, it's kind of like the East football team being very improved this season, uh, just like all the improvements going on with the school. Again, your final score here from Vincent J. Dvorak Field, Tom's of Reese 13, Tom's of South 8. For my broadcast partner, Jack Bratton, our entire uh, crew here at TR Schools TV, I'm Casey Kenerkowski. We'll see you next time here on the Game of the Week, presented by the TRA. Good night, folks.